What up fam, it's Francisco with Team Hilote, and this is Across the Bar. And today's special guest is Indio City Council Member, Oscar Ortiz. So Oscar, for those that don't know you, if you wanna introduce yourself and give a little bit of, bit of history. Yeah, uh, my name is Oscar Ortiz. I'm on the Indio City Council. I've been a council member since uh, the end of 2018. I'm also, from my background, I, I'm, by education, I'm a chemist. I've worked in pharmaceuticals. I've worked in the cannabis industry. And now as I'm getting more involved in politics, I've also been working on other campaigns. So uh, that's where I'm at right now. And glad to be here. Thanks for the opportunity to talk to everybody. Thanks, Oscar. Man, you got a lot on your plate. I love it. <laughs> uh, we'll get into the three questions, Oscar. Uh, number one, give us a little short version of a typical day at your job in the office uh, before COVID. Yeah, so uh, right before COVID, I was actually working on the, on the Bernie campaign. So I was out on Coachella. And so every day, you know, I'd head out there in the morning. I'd be uh, training people throughout the day, training volunteers, uh, having meetings, having little teach-ins, you know, to teach about what we were trying to do. And, and then we'd also do a lot of door knocking, a lot of phone banking, and they used to be in groups, right? So we'd have groups there showing up to phone bank, or if we had, you know, a presentation, we have food there and everybody would kind of be able to be in the same space together. Throughout that time too, because the city council that job's kind of, um, you need flexibility, right? Because you're meeting with different people who are on different schedules, different careers, different parts of the city. So uh, with that, I would have to, you know, I, I made that agreement with, always make that agreement with my work that I need flexibility. And so different times I'd leave and go meet uh, with, with residents or business people or, you know, have our meetings for, you know, we have like the energy and environment committee that I'm a part of with the Coachella Valley Association of Governments. Uh, the Southern California Association of Governments, I'm part of their Energy and Environment Committee in Los Angeles as well. So making little trips here and there to, to handle those meetings, but also, you know, being there as, as part of the office. Got it. Well, you know what, I, I followed you on, uh, uh, I would say, all social media platforms. And nice. you've always been kind of, I feel like, ahead of the game with, with technology, broadcasting your stuff live. So I think that's been great. So when when COVID hit and we were ordered to stay at home and everything was shut down how quick were you able to adapt to stay in touch with the community and the local businesses you know so what are you doing now during COVID to, to address all that yeah i guess I'm, I'm always trying to look at the positives right and trying to use it to my my advantage so now uh because you know like the meetings in la that i was saying we don't have to drive out there right so it saves me a whole day really and I can use that to, to, to study, to communicate with, with, with my residents, um, to join, you know, interviews like this. In, in a normal day, sometimes I wouldn't really have time to be uh, doing something like this. So I've been just trying to jump on every opportunity that I have to reach out to different parts of, of the community. As far as I was actually transitioning to Elizabeth Romero's campaign while we were getting news of, of the COVID stuff happening. And so in that campaign with Bernie, we were really heavy on, on door knocking, right? We were hitting really big goal, uh, goals and door knocking. We're hitting like a thousand doors a day at the end, at the end of the, at the end of the campaign. And so that had to all just scale back. And so we started doing more of phone banking programs. And so I, I recorded a video actually online on YouTube and showed people how to do the phone banking. And so that way people, you know, e even at home or even if I wasn't available or they're at home, they can watch the video and learn how to phone bank. You know, they can learn the script and we'd have it all available at any time for anybody who was looking to, to help us out. And for events, we'd have to do, instead of you know fundraisers where you bring people over to a house, we just have to bring them into the Zoom meeting. <laughs> and we had people who would do their pitch, right? So like, oh, can you donate some money? You know, fundraising is really tough right now because we can't have events, you know, what, what, what can you give? And it was kind of a difficult place too because people didn't have, people, it was really in certain times, right? So you couldn't really ask for, for too much from people. So we just asked for, for anything that people were able to, to help us out with. And then um, what's the other, the other aspect of it was, so the phone banking we did. Oh, also when we were phone banking, like I said, we, we take advantage of the, situ, the situation that we're in. So we had all, all the, phone, the phone numbers that people could reach out to for resources. And so after we get through, you know, doing our pitch about Elizabeth Romero, we'd say, hey, are, are you guys, in need of any financial resources. And we'd kind of give them, you know, if they need a phone number, if they need a website, if they, you know, if they're a small business, they need to talk to the chamber. So we'd kind of made it a little helpline as well, right? So we're calling up, we're, all, we're 
giving you some information about the, the campaign, but we're also uh, doing a little community service at the same time and seeing if you need any help at the time. That's good. I didn't realize uh, politics is very similar to real estate as far as, you know, we door knock and yeah. we have a, you know, a lot of, a lot of, you know, those type of phone calls. Um, but I'm glad you guys were able to, to, to be a resource. I know when I, if I have to make a phone call, I try to have a reason to make a phone call or, or offer them like, Hey, if you need any assistance with anything else, that way it's not always, you know, like, Hey, you know, scratch my back or, or I need something. Uh, yeah. just makes the conversation more pleasant. So that's Definitely. awesome. Um, so moving on to uh, question number three, where do you see uh, your, your job or where you're going after COVID once people are allowed to get back to work? Do you think you'll keep a lot of these things in place moving forward? You know, are these things going to stay or are we, should we just expect, you know, this platform to go away for you? Um, you know what? I hope it, it stays for different reasons. You know, so some meetings, it's, it does feel better to have people in person, but I think it does open it up a little bit more when people are able to participate from home. And the, the other thing that I actually like is, you know, when we're looking at the environmental situation that we're in and how, you know, the air was starting to clean up in LA just a few days into it, right? A few weeks into it, you'd see people were seeing mountains that they had never, they hadn't seen in decades, right? And that happened all over the world and just seeing that, you know, and just seeing uh, that I like the again, the meeting in LA that I was going to, you know, having to drive out there a uh, um, couple out, two hours out there, two hours back and then spend taxpayer money on the hotel room for the night on, on the gas, you know, on the car <laughs> and all that. It, it really just makes more sense if I could just log in online and have our meeting and we're saving all those, you know, five hours of being on the road, I can spend it studying. So I'm more prepared for, for that meeting or getting other work done for, for our residents or for the city or whatever it is. Yeah, so I kind of, I, I kind of hope that the Zooms thing stays in place for a while. Um, as far as other aspects of it, you know, the door knocking I, for campaigns, that is crucial. Like there's nothing like talking with somebody person to person. And, and I think it, people really appreciate when you actually take the time, especially when you're volunteering, that you're not getting paid and you're going out there to their house to talk to them about changes that you want to see in the community, right? I think that's very valuable. So I would like to see that come back soon, as, as soon as, you know, uh, medically recommended, <laughs> because I also think here, we, we always have to keep that in mind, right? I, know, I, I agree. I think there's certain things that um, you can't get across in these type of platforms. They're a great tool once you have a relationship established, but um, I've always felt like, hey, <clears throat> they can hang up on me, but when they shut the door on me, you know, I think it's different when they see, you know, you're out there sweating and, and you know, you're just in tennis shoes, but nice pants. Cause you know, you're, you're, you're putting your boots on the ground. Yeah. And I know you've always been very active that way in the community. So that's why I was like, man, I wonder what, what he's done, you know, cause people uh, specifically, I think elected officials, like there's like a big responsibility, you know, to continue that aspect, but with us being shut down, um, it's, it's just, you know, it's scary. It's scary that, you know, we can't do that anymore, but yeah. Hopefully. Yeah, and I mean, the social events are always good, right? Like getting to know people out there and getting new people. And I think that's the harder part is getting new people into your circle, like getting somebody to jump on a Zoom call with people that they haven't, don't really know, they haven't met before, or for something that they're not. And, you know, when you have food there, people come. <laughs> when, when you have meetings, you know, you have good food, you have good people, good music, a DJ or something, like people show up. With the Zoom, it's, it's a little harder to get people to show up that way, so. But I think there's uses for it. I hope that it does stay in use for, for certain things. But also, you know, I do, I do think the social aspect of having gatherings and everything, we really need that back at some point. Yeah, I, I know I missed it. Um, well, to conclude the, uh, the interview, Oscar, I, um, do, you, do you feel, or I guess I should ask, you know, personally, I feel like there's a lot of uh, uh, misinformation out on social media. And I, like, personally feel like I look for community leaders uh, you know, like yourself, elected officials to, to provide that information. And is there anything you wanna share with the community that you feel people are, you know, do have the wrong information on? I mean, I, I just wanna make sure everybody knows that, that just because businesses are opening doesn't mean that the, the risk is any less than it was before, right? And I think we all kind of, a lot of us really predicted that and we saw that coming. 
And I, I really understand from the, from the business perspective, we kind of left as an entire government, right? Federal, state, local, we left our residents hanging because we, we didn't provide, it, it should have been mortgages and rents are delayed, right? So that people can, were, are able to stay home. But because that wasn't provided, people were pushing for that reopening because they got to survive. They're going into debt every month. And so we really understand that, but we, we, I just hope that people, as much as they can, you know, I know people got to pay the bills and people got to um, get out there and, and, and make ends meet, but as much as you can, please stay home. Uh, please, uh, you know, keep doing everything we, we were doing before, wearing your mask, only go out for groceries. You know, I'm, I'm only going out once every week or every two weeks for groceries. Like I'm really taking it seriously because, you know, we, we were, I've been taught that way, right? I'm a scientist. I know the the way virus is spread and the risks that come with that. And we don't know how many times we'll be infected, right? So you might survive the first one, but is it gonna come back in six months? Is it gonna come back in a year? Like, we really don't know. So we just wanna play it safe right now and make sure that everybody's doing what they can to delay any any contamination right now. Yeah, and kind of lost a walk. I'm right there with you. I try to limit my, you know, interaction even from grocery stores uh, because I think uh, I'm scared just like everybody else. I got a family and, yeah. you know, we also have to go, you know, we have to work, but if we do just practice, you know, social distancing as much as possible and wash your hands and wear a mask, you know, it's just uh, small yeah. things, but I really, uh, I really hope that as a community, we can get on board and not be separated by certain things like a mask. Um, just I'll do our part. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> All right, Oscar. Well, if there's anything else you want to share, I mean, you're free to do so. If not, you know, go ahead and end the meeting. And I'll, I'll put a link on the uh, on the video. So if anyone has specific questions for you, you know, they can reach out if that's okay. Yeah, definitely. You know, my, my uh, Instagram is at Oscar for Indio, my Facebook, Oscar Ortiz, like follow us. We, I try to keep people updated and put out good information and try to be, you know, uh, just straightforward, just bring some facts and good information for people. Uh, other than that, um, if anybody has other, you know, shows that, you know, you, you need uh, information for, to get out to the community, let me know. I'm happy to do any interviews at the moment. So uh, we'll stay in touch. And th awesome. thanks, thanks for the opportunity to talk with you guys today. Appreciate it. Thank you. And uh, enjoy the rest of your day. All right. You too. See ya.